let's now consider Hebrew parallelisms. What is our objective for this uh, lesson? State and briefly describe the types of parallelism based on semantic and linguistic relationships. Berlin observed that most books that deal with Hebrew poetry refer to Robert Loth, 1710 to 1787, who systematically analyzed parallelisms. His emphasis and that of his predecessors though were the similarity and redundancy of corresponding parallel lines and terms. Krugel found this lacking, for he observed that with parallelism, there are also evidences of continuity and completion. Alter augments these observations and suggested that there is intensification in parallelism. Later, Berlin and company proposed the linguistic approach that gives attention to the grammatical features of whole lines and not just words or word pairs. So Robert Loth, his emphasis was on similarity and redundancy. Krugel was on continuity and completion. Berlin was on linguistic and grammatical features. Let's now consider types and categories. These categories integrate the definitions and principles set forth by those who studied parallelism since the time of Loth semantic relationships, word pairs, and linguistic models. So under semantic relationship, analysis of parallel lines in terms of the same meaning. Synonymous parallelism, the same sense is expressed by different but equivalent terms. Synonymous or quasi-synonymous terms, ideas are similar or equivalent. So we have here an example, he does not treat us according to our sins, and he does not repay us according to our iniquities. Sins and iniquities, the same meaning, different terms. Then complementary, corresponding terms form a related word pair. So yom, leyom, and then velayla, lelayla, so day after day, night after night. That in itself is a word pair. Letter C is your numerical. A number in the first line corresponds to the higher number in the next line. So you have your shalosh and then arba. See, three things are not satisfied. Four things do not say enough. Of your synthetic parallelism, the second line or phrase develops or advances the idea of the first line. Specifying, the second line specifies a preceding general statement. For instance, his soul will dwell in prosperity and his seed will inherit the land. So prosperity, a very general term, and then specifically, how will he be prosperous? His seed will inherit the land. That's more specific. Letter B, explanatory. The second line gives an explanation or reason for the previous statement. Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. So the reason why we have to sing to the Lord, because he is highly exalted. Letter C is your progressive or consequential. The second line makes a logical and or temporal advance on the first. Realize that the Lord sets the godly apart for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. So the setting apart is specified also or gives a consequence in the second. When I call to him because he has set me apart, he will hear me. Comparative, the second line completes a comparative statement or line and uses a metaphor or simile. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongue to flatter. So something is being compared and then the second line completes what is stated in the first. Letter E is your contrastive. The second line makes a statement that contrasts with the first. The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. So it's translate, the verb there is translated as but, not in. There is a contrast that you can observe. Number three is antithetic parallelism. Two lines or terms correspond, but there are, these are in opposition to each other. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked is rotten. Then chiastic parallelism. The order of terms in the first line is reversed in the second line. Proclaim in Judah and in Jerusalem announce. So proclaim and announce and then place of Judah 
Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the capital of Judah. Five is staircase. Terms in the first line are repeated verbatim. In the second and the next lines to form a complete thought. So, awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, chant a song. So, the second line completes or gives um, additional thought to the first thought. And then six, would you like to read that? And seven, we have what we call your Janus parallelism. This involves the use of a single term, but it has two different meanings, allowing for a double entendre. The first meaning is expressed in the first line, in the second on the next line. For instance, the blessings of your father surpass the blessings of the eternal mountains or the desirable things of the age-old hills. So that's for semantic relationships. Let's now consider word pairs or analysis of parallel word pairs. Scholars use several approaches in studying word pairs. In the end, the focus is on the occurrence of word pairs that are split so that one word from this pair occurs on the first line and the other word occurs in the next line. Like for instance, your horses and chariots. So they trust in chariots, they trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Let's look now at the main contribution of Adele Berlin. So it's on the linguistic model. It's an analysis of whole lines and not just words and word pairs. We have the grammatical aspect, lexical aspect, semantic aspect, and then phonological aspect. Let's uh, look at the examples. For your grammatical aspect, the syntax of the parallel line is equal. So not according to our sins did he deal with us. Not according to our transgressions did he repay us. The parallel lines are basically the same in syntax. Number two is your lexical aspect, the pairing of associated words which may or may not accompany grammatical parallelism. The power of his deed, he told his people, in giving to them the inheritance of the nations. So your Goyam and then your Amo here, Am, and then Goy for nations. Number three, semantic aspect, the meaning of parallel lines. His glory covers the heaven and the earth is full of his praise. These lines convey a similar meaning, but it is also true that the second may be perceived as the result of the first so that there is semantic sequence. And then for your phonological aspect, the sounds of terms in the parallel lines are similar. So peace and tranquility. So you have there your shalom and then shalva. May there be peace inside your defenses and prosperity inside your fortresses. In terms of the next example, it's uh, your mids and then chariots. So you have your... Mekrevaika, and then Markevoteka. So I will destroy your horses in your midst. I will smash your chariots. So we have seen a semantic parallelism, word pairs, and then your linguistic models. For your exercise, I want you to work on the Psalm or Wisdom Book text assigned to you. And then isolate the parallel lines, identify the pa type of parallelism in each verse, surface the meaning that is being communicated, reflect these observations and discoveries in your exegetical outline and paper. So this, is, this will be for your exercises, applying um, what we learned in parallelism, with parallelism.